In this video, I'm field testing the new OM Systems 150 to 600 mm f5 to 6.3 zoom lens, and I'll be showing both still images as well as video footage using this lens. So in this video, what I'm actually doing is doing another test of the new Olympus 150 to 600 mm lens. Where I've come today is to RSPB Lake and Heath and this is a really good opportunity to test it out in quite dull conditions. One of the big advantages of Lake and Heath is that they actually have a photographer's hide set up here. Most of the hides you go to an RSPB reserve or anything like that, the hides are set up for bird watchers and often as not the birds are too far away. But here they actually have a, uh, an area where they bait the birds up there. They have this, this hide here. And you can get some really good shots of reed buntings. And that's what I've been concentrating on today. Now the conditions have been quite challenging. So it's a really good test out for this lens. I've had to put the ISO, not just the lens, but also the camera. I've had to put the ISO up to 3200, 4000, that sort of thing. Now the reason I've come up here is because... There'd been a heavy frost forecast, and although there was a frost, it wasn't quite as heavy as I'd hoped it'd be. But in those sort of conditions, there's actually a, a pool in front of this hide. And what happens is it's quite shallow and it will freeze over. And they have a number of feeders out here. And what happens is the blue tits, the great tits, long tail tits and all that sort of thing come to the feeders. But often as not, what will happen is also you'll get male and female reed buntings coming in. And although you don't want to photograph them on the feeders, what happens is they will actually come down onto the actual ice underneath the feeders. And there you can get some quite nice shots of them on the ice. But also there's an area of reed beds in the background. Uh, and with this zoom range that you get on this lens, that allows you to get the birds right over on the far side but also you can zoom back and get sort of you know when they come very very close indeed but it's got a lot longer focal length this is 150 to 600 well if you equate that to a full frame camera that's a 300 to 1200 mil lens admittedly it's a it's a smaller sensor size but the fact that often as not the birds will come on the reed beds over there so I can really zoom out to them um, but also they'll come quite close sometimes as well so then I can just zoom back the lens is very very well made um, it's part of this is part of a series that I'm going to be doing about three videos on it um, I'm going down to Elmley sort of to actually do some bird photography with it there photographing from a car and I'll also be going to do birds in flight so I'm going to really give it a good test out there's lots of birds coming in here unfortunately that the feeders are of quite empty that's not actually such a bad thing because it does concentrate the birds into what in into one area but certainly the reed buntings have been really posing nicely this morning don't think I'm going to get any action shots with the lighting it's very very dull and very very overcast so I'm only getting something like 500th of a second uh, at the moment it's actually yeah, 500th of a second, uh, and that's wide open. Now, at the full focal length end of the lens, it's 6.3. So, so this lens isn't actually one of the pro lenses. It's going to sit in between the 100 to 400 and the 150 to 400. But and the price will be somewhere in between. I don't know what the price is yet um, until it's actually released at the end of the month. I don't know. But... It's going to be one of these lenses that appeals to people who would ideally like the the 150 to 400, but at six and a half grand, it's a hell of a lot of money. It took me a long time to save up for it. But this is quite a solid lens. It's it's nowhere near as, as light as the 100 to 400. And oh, there's a reed bunting down there, just nicely. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm just going to press the. The video button. The birds are quite close here in at the moment underneath this near feeder. 
so I can actually zoom back and get them all in and that's a big advantage but this hide is very very good in the summer it's it's a bit of a waste of time because it gets very overgrown and the water in front of the hide dries out so generally speaking I only come here in in, in the winter time uh, and certainly on the reeds the birds look very very good So the camera I'm using today is the new OM-1 Mark II. Again, Olympus has sent this to me a few weeks before it is on release, so I'll test it out, see what I thought, and also make a video on it. The autofocus was very good on the OM-1, but it's even better on the OM-1 Mark II. Um, also, it will the buffer is bigger, it'll actually write to the cards a lot quicker, it holds more in the buffer so the card won't, if you're doing a big burst at 50 frames a second or, or anything like that it doesn't sort of fill the buffer up quite so much but it's a, it's a great camera I'm obviously going to sort of have that as my main camera and have the ordinary OM-1 as my second camera as backup um, there's a number of different refinements that they've brought into it not necessarily useful for bird photography but the big improvement is the actual improvement in the autofocus I mean it was damn good on the OM-1 but it's even better now one thing that I have been doing today is shooting some video and I've been doing some video in 4k 60 frames a second and some in slow motion at 120 frames a second. When you're shooting video, when you're shooting at 4K 60 frames a second, the autofocus will work, so as the bird's moving around it will keep it in focus. Unfortunately at 120 frames a second slow motion it still doesn't autofocus. It will initially when you focus on it, but if the bird comes forward it will lose the focus unfortunately. Um, if they'd done that, it would have really, you know, if they'd got autofocus at 120 frames a second, it would have been fantastic. But it still produces some very nice videos, and uh, I think I've got some quite nice shots today. So I'm going to finish up showing a couple of more video clips as well as stills taken with 150 to 600 mil. Although in this video I'm using the lens on a tripod, it's light enough to handhold easily, so if you're walking around a Zerg without a tripod, this lens would be ideal, especially considering the extra reach you get at 600mm. One problem that some zoom lenses have is creep. This is where when walking around the lens gradually starts to extend. You sometimes get this with trombone version lenses. One of my old Canon lenses was particularly prone to this and it can be quite annoying. Fortunately, on this lens it has a lock on the side where you can lock the lens so it does not creep. As it's not a pro lens you do not get the full degree of image stabilising that you get with the more expensive pro lenses. Having said that, the image stabilising is still pretty good and in my next video I'll be showing some handheld video footage of a kestrel in flight. With this lens you do not get the full 50 frames a second with autofocus that you do get with the pro lenses. You still get 25 frames a second and that's pretty damn good and certainly fast enough to track a fast moving bird. This video is not a full technical appraisal of the lens. Those of you who know me know that I'm not a technical sort of bloke. This is just a field test to show the quality of the image you can obtain using the lens. So to finish up the video, I'm going to give you a size comparison between the new lens and the two existing lenses. This one here 
is the 100 to 400. And this one is my lens, which is the 150 to 400 with a built in 125 extender. And this is the new lens, the 150 to 600 mil. You can see that it's in between the size and weight of the two. Nowhere near as light and compact as this one, but it's not as big and chunky as the other one. But with that focal length of 150 to 600 mil, I think this lens is going to be a lens that will appeal to a lot of bird photographers. In the next video in this series, where I'm using the 150 to 600 mil, I'll be going to Elmley Nature Reserve in Kent, and once again, taking pictures in quite challenging conditions. Hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.